Hello, everyone. Thank you all so much for joining. My name is Emma Wadiak, and I am a career development specialist here in the Career Center at Sacramento State. Today, I want to spend some time sharing a little bit about what the Career Center does. Uh, we actually do a lot more than just resume and cover letter help, so I want to share with you all a bit about what we do and also get you all thinking about your own career development process. We'll do a career exploration activity and uh, hopefully get you thinking about your future career development. So first off, what is the Career Center here at Sac State? We, like I said, do a lot more than just resume and cover letter review. We actually assist with uh, self-exploration, helping you explore different opportunities for work and different job search resources. We can help you connect with various employers. There are a variety of online tools that we offer so that you can do some of this exploration at home. We also offer a variety of events and workshops as well as one-on-one -on -one guidance and counseling for your own personal career development journey. For those of you who don't know, we are located in Lassen Hall, 1013. We offer drop-in hours Monday through Friday from 10 to 4. Those do not require any sort of pre-scheduled appointment, so uh, feel free to stop by at any time and we would be happy to assist you. So career development is really a lifelong process. You'll see here that it's broken down into a series of pretty linear steps, but for many people, the process doesn't look this straightforward. But for the sake of explanation today, I will cover these in kind of individual stepping stones. So the first step is exploration. What we want you to do is really get a feel for yourself and what it is that you're wanting out of your own career development experience. So maybe looking into what your personal values are, what your skills are, what your interests are, and really getting comfortable with how those things might influence your own career path. It's also great to explore some opportunities out there. So whether that's different internships, whether that's different fields of interest, new classes that seem intriguing to you, all of that is great opportunity for exploration. Once you've done that, research can be really helpful in this process. So using a variety of tools to determine what are industry norms, what jobs exist in the world, how might your skill sets contribute to those industries, but ultimately looking into some of these norms, some of these opportunities, and getting a feel for what exists out there. Next, we have decide and act. So with that uh, comes some preparation of job search materials. So things like resume and cover letter. It may also involve preparing some materials for graduate school. So things like personal statements, but ultimately you're gearing up all the materials to set you into these next steps. From there, hopefully that leads into some valid, valuable experience. So whether that's an internship, it could even be unpaid volunteer experience, whatever it is that can get you some firsthand exposure into these different opportunities is great. So take these as chances or opportunities, if you will, to explore and see how these different opportunities sit with you. You may think, for example, that you want a career in PR, but once you do an internship or experience it firsthand, you might find that there are different elements of the job or elements of the industry that don't really sit well with you. That is totally okay. If you find that that's the case, it can be great to go back to the drawing board, potentially start with exploration and research again, and then pursue other opportunities from there. Once you have some experience under your belt, that can really help with your resume and other job uh, application materials. So hopefully from there, you can really launch yourself, go into those big next steps in terms of uh, your own career development, as well as the longevity of your career. So maybe that includes something like going to grad school, uh, actually kind of starting in 
something that doesn't just feel like a job for you, but is really career aligned. And that's really where the launch phase comes into play. Like I said, this doesn't necessarily look like a linear process for people. You may find that you arrive at one step and ultimately need to go back to kind of reevaluate or reassess. That's totally okay. This, like I mentioned, is a lifelong process. So you may find that it feels a little scattered, but ultimately you will figure things out. And we are here to help you throughout that process. So with exploration in mind, we do want to do a bit of an activity. So what I want you to do is grab a piece of paper and a pen, and I want you to divide the section into five, divide the paper rather into five different sections. So in the upper left-hand corner, I want you to outline some classes or activities that you enjoyed most either in high school or in your first year here in college. In the upper right hand corner, I want you to outline two to three hobbies or activities that are of interest to you or that you enjoy. In the bottom left hand corner, please list one to three life experiences or activities that you've enjoyed most. And then in the bottom right corner, list some things that friends or family have said are your natural strengths or talents. So go ahead and take a couple minutes to do that. You can pause the video if you need, but take this time just to brainstorm. Okay, hopefully you've paused the video and have had the opportunity to write down a few items. Looking at the things that you've listed in each quadrant, I want you to now look at the center of your diagram and list some major and career ideas that you feel may align well with the things that you've listed in your other sections. And if it helps you, you may want to collaborate with a friend or ask a family member what ideas they might have given what you've written down. Okay, now that you've been thinking about some major or career options, in alignment with other elements that you've listed on your brainstorming activity, I do want to cover some major myths that exist in the world. So the first of which, and this is common that I hear with students, I have to major in business to own my own business. That's false. Uh, there are majors or people who have studied a variety of things who go into various industries and ultimately may end up starting their own business especially with today's economy, a real prevalence with the gig economy, it's becoming more and more prevalent to really start your own thing. So if that's something that's of interest to you, please don't feel like you have to major in business in order to pursue that path. Another major myth is uh, I want to go to medical school, so I must have to major in biology. Um, that's not necessarily the case. There are certainly some classes, mainly science classes, that tend to be prerequisites for different uh, medical school programs, but you don't have to major in biology in order to qualify for those. Myth number three, I can't major in English because I don't want to be a teacher. There are many, many things that English majors can do. Uh, actually, English majors tend to do really well in law school. And the reason for that is that they are doing a lot of reading. There's a lot of critical thinking involved. They're writing. And all of these different skill sets carry over really nicely into legal careers. That's just one example. But what I want you to take away from that is that these majors have transferable skill sets. You're building these different skills within these areas of study that can then be applied to a number of different industries. So when you're looking into major selection, I want you to think about the knowledge and the skill sets that you're trying to take away as a result of your study and think critically of how those skills might be applied to a number of different roles or a number of different industries professionally. And then the last one we have listed here is I want to make a lot of money, so I need to major in engineering. Engineers certainly can make a lot of money. I'm not trying to discount that as an option, but there are lots of different pathways and lots of different majors 
that can uh, lead to pretty prosperous and well-paying positions. So um, while you know finances and income certainly could and should be a part of your evaluative process in what you'd like to do moving forward, I wouldn't solely pick a major based off of that one facet. I would rather you take a much more holistic look at what your options are. Okay, so some different tools that you can use to facilitate your exploration process. We've talked about some brainstorming activities. Uh, you've listed some ideas of what might inform some of your decision-making process. We've talked about some major myths involved. So now I want to show you some various resources that you can use to uh, look further into some of these options. So with major exploration, I want you to be curious. Maybe sign up for a class that you don't know much about or it looks intriguing to you but may not appear to be the most directly aligned with your uh, planned major. Okay, we also have a resource called Focus to Career that's offered through the Career Center website. And let me actually show you how to get there. Okay, so we're going to pull up Focus to Career. If you go to the Career Center homepage, this is what you'll see. And under the featured tools, we have Focus to Career. Go ahead and click on that and then use your Sac State login credentials to uh, log in. Once you've logged in, you'll see this. And if you go to the self-assessment tab, um, what I'd like you to take is the work interest assessment. This is a pretty quick personal assessment that will populate some ideas for major and career that align well with some of the um, some of the factors that you've input into your assessment. So this can be a great tool if you need some ideas. Another great resource can be LinkedIn. So in order to create a LinkedIn, you would just create an account uh, using a personal email address and setting up a password. But once you log in, there's actually a feature to look up Sacramento State alumni. So in this case, I'm going to search the school. Okay, so we've searched Sac State, and under the schools page, you can click on alumni. Okay, and you'll see here that there's over 134,000 Sac State alumni on LinkedIn. What you can do from here is actually filter by what they studied. So if you're unsure of what you can do with a major or what people with that major tend to go into, you can look up, let's say psychology, and get a feel for where they work, what they do, where they, I'm sorry, what they studied. So we've selected psychology in this case, what they're skilled at. And if you scroll down, you can actually see the profiles of the folks who are meeting those criteria. So I would take a look through some of these profiles, get a feel for their different jobs that they're doing, and maybe see if that major leads into potential paths that are interesting to you. I think what you'll find is that some of the outcomes are pretty surprising, okay? Something else that can be helpful to facilitate some of this major exploration process is to look at Sac State's academic catalog. Um, I've pulled it up directly here, but if you scroll through, you can actually click on different majors and minors and look at the course requirements for that given program. So you may think you have an, exam have an interest in something like anthropology, for example, but if you click on it, you can see the actual requirements and the actual courses involved for that major. So this can also help to inform your exploration and ultimately your decision-making process. Okay, let's get back into our slides here. In terms of exploring different careers, you can look up what can I do with this major. That's another featured tool on the Career Center website. 
With this, you can use your uh, Sac State login credentials and actually search for a given major. And it will give you ideas of what people with that major tend to go into professionally. So that can be super helpful. Um, another great resource is doing informational interviewing, which is talking to different people in the field that you're interested in and just asking them questions about what their experience is like, what their path to that profession may have looked like, what advice they might give for somebody going into that profession. So this can be a really great learning opportunity. We do have a resource through our Career Center website called Sac State Career Network where you can actually pair up with mentors who are working in different fields and uh, they will sign up to have a conversation with you to tell you more about the profession that they work in. Other resources for exploration include the Occupational Outlook Handbook and then YouTube. So if you search a day in the life of or a day in the life of such and such career, um, it can hopefully populate some videos of people in different professions who can provide some additional insight. Okay, so you'll see here a screenshot of the Career Center website. We've taken a brief look at it outside of the PowerPoint. But the Featured Tools page is where you'll find many, many of these resources. So I would encourage you to spend some time looking it over and exploring the different uh, tools that can help you with your own exploration process. And then if you need additional support, um, what I would encourage you to do is schedule a, an appointment with a career counselor at the Career Center. Uh, we are absolutely happy to help you uh, as you explore your different options. You can also do the Focus 2 assessment on your own time, and then feel free to attend Career Center events because those are great learning opportunities as well. In order to stay up to date with our different events and happenings around campus, I would encourage you to follow us on social media. We do have a Facebook, Instagram page, and a Twitter account. So please feel free to stay in touch. And with that, we thank you for your time. Please feel free to come to us with any questions or concerns. We would be more than happy to help you.